I know we get paid for it, but yeah. I... <laughs> Yikes. And to be, just to refresh your memory, Mocket versus G2 actually went pretty decent for Mocket last season. So it is, it's, I mean, it's always an uphill battle against G2, but I mean, I feel like Mocket put, put up a pretty decent game last time. Yeah, but I think, so here's the thing. Playday number, number 12 in season eight, it was Clubhouse and they played, and it was a 5-5 tie. Yeah. Which is one of the two ties that, uh, <laughs> the two ties that um, G2 had throughout the yeah. season. And of course, they only had one loss that was against Penta Sports. What an ironic twist of fate. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, that was at the end of the season when uh, their points didn't matter. Oh, yeah, they, they were qualified but, basically by day yeah. seven. But either way, though, that is still like not bad for uh, Mocket to be in that place. We'll see how they do this time, especially now that they've got a new player. So we'll see how that works out for them. Is uh, I didn't really notice any kind of notable history for Crying in terms of other teams that uh, would be worth mentioning. I mean, he did play yeah. on planned key dynamics in the past, yeah, which is mostly a challenger league team. And yeah. otherwise, it's just there. They played in Castle Siege, which is uh, basically a minor German tournament headed by Verdi. Um, of course, the uh, <laughs> okay Ash band. Corey was called it. Yeah. Okay, so Maestro is going to be banned in here. Maverick, Ash, Maestro, and you'd expect Mira, but then, you know, Echo is obviously a big band that's available for both teams. We rarely see a Maestro and Echo ban, though, as generally you're going to want to reserve <laughs> one of those, but of Got course... Got him! No, perfect. I, I love when it's wrong about <laughs> things like that, where it's like, ooh, this is going to be even more interesting, but also means attacks could be a little bit faster. Yes. So now the advantage should go in the way of the attacking side because you have Habana available. Sure, you lose that on the Ash, but in the current format and the current balancing that we have metagame, Zofia is very much in the correct position where she should be. She is a side grade to Ash. Yeah, I mean, and especially once the, once the nerf kind of came into play in terms of uh, losing another one of your grenades. Which is, in my opinion, good decision. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, it's definitely gotten a little bit of play, but... Uh... Oh, interesting. Oh, Capped yeah. out no. was a predictable one, but going with the Monty, not so much. All right. Finca as well. That'll be very interesting. Remember, yes, uh... you still have quick ADS by uh, playing Finca, just so you can nano boost people. Yeah, no, it's still going to boost uh, Monty a bit. Yeah. You know? And not to mention the ability if, uh, if Monty or someone gets knocked down to be able to revive remotely is exactly. it's something we don't see a ton of, but certainly helpful. Yeah, and of course... Uh, you know, there's different ways of doing it. If you want to play the Monty, you're mostly going to be using it to um, block line of sight and the ability to do anything from your opponents. But when you play Blitz, it's like we saw with, with Mint, I believe, with Dark Zero, where he was just standing in front of his opponents and just nuclear deterrent. You want to fight me? I will flash you. I will shoot you. And the Finca, of course, just adds to that the ability to... ADS super, super fast. And for 10 seconds, seconds you can't do much. That's more than enough for that seven second plant. Or you can play the aggressive play where you are literally in your opponent's face trying to go for the kills, which is not the case. That's What'll be interesting here is, uh, you know, let's say the smokes are out of play and it's down to C4 throws to try and stop a plant down there. Monty, while he doesn't block the explosion for his teammates behind him, exactly. can be standing farther forward, knock down the C4, and then have it much further back Indeed. from his teammates. And that's exactly it. You know, a reminder for everyone. You it, you cannot block the explosive. You only block it for yourself if you're playing yeah. with a shield. But it certainly will physically knock it down exactly. and not stick to the shield, rather. So it, it will potentially slow or you know shorten the range. Of oh, it. what a nice shot! Start. The first kill of EU Pro League, the way of Jonas and playing here with the Finca. Of course, the Adrenal Surge, Finca plus the LMG makes a ton of sense. The Spear 308 obviously means that you don't have any recoil realistically to deal with, but... With the LMG, it means that you can have sustained rate of fire plus practically no recoil when we're using the boost. Well, it's one of the few operators definitely that does get brought with the LMG pretty regularly, and mm -hmm. well, we saw it work just fine. So now it's on crying to try and hold this off uh, upstairs here. Yeah, interesting setup here, not reinforcing the side from the kitchen. The Monty's going to be very important for uh, this kind of push here. Um, so far, Pengu just moving down the stairs as goo mines are going to get taken down. Forcing a gas canister early on here from the smoke at a minute 40. As KS will have to fall back playing the smoke this time and not his usual Mira. That's Rips' job in this round. Jonas taking a bit of damage. Something I have noticed from G2 is they are starting to get a lot more swift on their attacks. They've been practicing and, and working towards faster executes. And first round plays from them tend to be a lot faster than some of the other ones because, well, it's the first round. You can get away with it a little bit more, especially when you have that sixth pick to disguise one of those plays. Oh, the angle from Fabian. Actually, he's running the G8 here on the IQ. 
and just spots the Valkyrie camera, drops down, forces Veil vale downstairs with so little health left. All the utility has been expended, and Penguin's just going to stand right next to the smoke and set the diffuser down and not protect it. Perfect play from G2. Time very well with the smokes even being thrown out by the Monty. Cantor Ricchetti will find one. Veil, vale. Fabian will go down finally, but Goga. Takes down KS and look at the push here from Pengu who wins it out. Rips will go down all up to crying and I think he's going to have to cry a river here. There's the Claymore downstairs and he can destroy it very easily of course and doesn't want to shoot it from above. It will reveal his position but Kanto Riketti ready. Hatshot comes in as crying will go down. It's very interesting that Twitch has kind of had a resurgence and I think it's mostly just the F2. I think people are like, hey, we can we could actually just use the power of the F2. That's exactly what we heard from Geo when he was talking about Canadian and the Twitch pick a couple yeah, of Yeah, well, he was also talking about, depending on the map as well, yeah. just the uh, the stealthiness of the drone. Indeed. Definitely factors into that as well. And, I mean, hey, if you can get in there and you have the ability to take out... We saw a lot of ADSs, for example, being taken out. The faster you can take out ADSs, sometimes the swifter it makes your attack because that's a lot less you have to deal with. And also the fact that he was kind of using that as a way to kind of play a bit more solo, which is something Kanto as a, a, a heavy fragger can be doing quite often. So it, it makes a lot of sense to see some of that resurgence. And Pengu is such a good Monty player. You saw even yeah. with the low health could still be doing just fine. It was it was a good good round for him. I mean, look at uh, Pe Pengu's performance as well during Dreamhack Winter, either on the Blitz or on the Monty. And he'll call himself a shield main in, in competitive play. Yeah, that's very much the case. Everybody knows Pengu for uh, flexibility here, but I wonder how they're going to play him here for the tower because that's exactly the site that Mock could have decided to, to pick. And we've seen yesterday, or two days ago, excuse me, how important it is to have a hold on the basement here for the tower. It's it's basically, if you take a site with three floors and just put it, like turn it 90 degrees, this is what you get here with tower. The hold has to be as vertical as humanly possible, but you also need to extend your reach just a bit far forward to have some sort of hold in the meeting hall and on the attic above. Yeah, and they certainly are trying to secure up whatever they can with those castle barricades to try and slow things down, as well as reinforcements, try to hold meeting hall as long as they can as well, because that's one of the things about very tight sites, very small sites, is you want to try and expand them out as much as possible. So meeting hall, uh, obviously an important part of that, as well as what you said about controlling the basement to give you the ability to rotate to other parts of the map Indeed. is important. But another early kill from G2. What? Where did he even find? Did he just... Oh, no. There we go. The nice, fast repel. No. Where oh, did he die? I wish we could... Uh, yeah. No, he, it was on the other side. Yeah, because the bandit was laying it down. There, there you go. go. He just shot through it as he heard probably a reinforcement. And then he's got a free kill off the window. All right. Nice. It's a good start here for G2 as Vale also taking a bit of damage early on. Kanto Ricchetti watching from above. It just protecting his teammates and Bengu is in. Fabian has taken control of the bottom site and now the smoke has to fight them up close and personal. This is not a good spot really as Corey's is being uh, reset on the Jaeger. And they can go for the plant right behind the Monty here but Fabian taking a bit of damage on the G8. Now, no protection on the opposite end here for G2 as Corey will find Kanto Ricchetti and at least have something done for the squad. The first casualty for G2 but Veil vale will be the second to go down. Mute is out and no C4 to play. None available here for Mocket. Well, looking pretty good for G2, who had a pretty swift start, but now they're getting slowed down a little bit. KS doing a good job holding the back here as well, kind of forcing Fabian to stay down in the basement. I mean, you mentioned mm -hmm. getting control of it earlier and that being important, but they're doing a good job of kind of quarantining Fabian down there. Well, he did play quite a bit of Lion in the past. So it's understandable. There you go. Smokes are being thrown in by the Monty. Crying is... Uh, been shut down here at least just a bit in positioning, but he'll come in and get the kill on Fabian. Goga with the kill on Corey, though, the refrag. And Pegasus just going in for the plan. No, Goga right to the face. And Refuser still not put down. The Monty has ADS and is ready for a peak as KS is somehow holding on to dear life. Does Yunus have any more adrenal surges? Because, yeah, he does have two. Hmm. All right. Well, I gotta imagine at least one more of those gonna factor into a plant attempt here. It's 49 seconds left. It's getting a little tight. However, manpower advantage still somewhat health-wise. Uh, oh, no! Perfect position from Cryon. And that's Pengu out of play, unfortunately. Not enough in the droning here to help out the team. Adrenal Surge needs to be used. Ten rounds in the drum, and KS will dispatch you on us. This round will go the way of Mocket. A very sloppy end here to it, and I have to say all because of Cryon's repositioning. was ready to take down the Monty as there's, there's two angles that you have to watch. One from the meeting stage 
and the other one that's literally on your right when you enter from the door. Unfortunately, you cannot cover both of them, and that was the end there. Yeah, I don't think uh, that G2 were properly pre uh, prepared with that lineup to be attacking tower. And you saw them kind of having to reposition a few different times on their attack. Fabian getting trapped downstairs. The Monty not being able to get the plant down during the smoke when they were trying to. Just, it seemed like, you know, very well prepared defense from Mocket because they were even down a man early and still were able to find a way to hold a lot of their positions inside the tower itself, being able to rotate up and down the stairs without Defending getting too pressure from too many different angles. I think the attackers. Castle Barricades helped a little bit as well in slowing things down in terms of giving them a chance to reposition, but I feel like some of that was just a, a general lack of coordination in terms of killing one man at a time from Mocket. G2 mm -hmm. really needed to be able to kind of pinch people one at a time, play their manpower advantage that they had early on from getting that early kill onto the bandit. They just were not able to do that. They were, you know, they were trying to crossfire from both sides, but never in a situation where they had one person solidly locked down to force them into the gun sights of another member of G2. And so it was just a lot of shooting in and not really landing a lot of shots. And that's the thing. Extra manpower is very important when you're attacking into tower, just because there are so many windows that can get shot by. So many positions where just runouts are possible. And losing Kanto Ricchetti on the, the top floor yeah. really does affect you out there on the roof. And you can't really watch the windows anymore. And the Jaeger had free reign to at some point do enough damage to his opponents where it kind of tagged them down just enough for the finisher. And KS somehow surviving with one HP. Yeah, that, definitely commendable. That made a big difference because obviously the shotgun doesn't take a whole lot of shots to make it count. Well, the one shot was all he needed. So this time they are setting up a bulletproof camera downstairs as well to be able to see through the smoke, knowing that they potentially will go for a smoke plant again. Ooh, again. Oh! <laughs> wow. Kanto Raketti, what is that? The flick of a century. This kitchen is certainly not safe against G2. Oh, man. It's twice now. Can you smell what G2 are cooking here? Because the people's elbow here is ready to you know, punish Mocket. Certainly seems that way. We are having a similar attack lineup again from G2, as it seems to work for the most part. It was just Tower where they seem to struggle a little bit with this particular lineup, but Pengu's still doing a great job taking map control very quickly. Interesting, the mute here is not running the shotgun. As we'll remind you, the SMG 11 has been added to mute's um, setup, so you can use the P226, you can use the SMG 11, and in this case, using the P226. All right, fairly, I don't want to really say strange, but you know out of the ordinary for the current way of playing. Well, if you know, if you have someone transitioning over from playing a lot of smoke as well, even more likely they would play the SMG-11, but if they're just kind of used to a certain way yeah. of play with me, you don't want to change it up if you don't need to. Obviously, it is still a choice. That's the thing. You add more choices. The Mew Jammers have been taken down as grenades being cooked by Jonas. Of course, not too long ago, this was added to Finca. Nicely located. done, too, taking out that bulletproof camera for the smoke plant later. Indeed, and now you have two smokes that can be used for G2 very easily and cannot really be okay. spotted. That's a big reason of why, you know, you bring a, a mute on the squad as well, just so you can have uh, the bulletproof camera. Sometimes it'll be the dock. You see the plant will go down, and Penguin now will have to escape and stand right in the middle of the site. C4 thrown out as well as two canisters now from Mocket. Rip's trying to find the angle on Pengu, but Pengu is giving him no quarters whatsoever. He can't really do anything against the fully deployed Monty. And there you go. Mute Jammer is going to get taken down. Pengu will eat the last canister and will go down to the floor and killed off by KS. But Goga at least make the refrag happen. Veil vale will go down. That's two players now out of play for Mocket. 26 seconds on the clock. Fabian! Find the kill here, the SG-553. The Twitch is spotted, but Kanto is ready. That's the kill he needed, and Jonas with the final one. LFP will make it happen. It's KS down on the floor, and Mocket will lose the third round here. I, I gotta say, I mean, while G2 came out ahead on that, I think one mistake they made was once Pingu was low on health from the smokes initially, he had Goga right there, and we know Goga's good at planting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely could have just dropped the diffuser, and then the more full health Thermite could have come around from behind to set that plant up while Pingu was doing a great job absorbing all the shots through his shield, could have protected him adequately. And, well, you know, if there was another smoke to come out, which is exactly what happened, I think he would have been able to live through it. And so that was just... Maybe not the right call, but either way, it was just too much aggressive peeking coming out from Mocket because of that. Their inability to land enough of those shots just opened themselves up, making it so G2 didn't have to go for the plant. They really should have just waited and baited them to go for the diffuser on top of the washing machine. That would have given them more of opportunity to have some predictability in terms of where they could have been shooting instead of trying to fight things like hatches. But 
G2 definitely came out ahead again, but they are only one point ahead so far. They're going to change up slightly what they're doing instead of the IQ this time. Going to bring Sophia for Fabian. Yep. But then we're now we're going to see a pulse come out from the defenders as they will be going to a different bomb site this time up to dorms. Now, this is the big thing. Uh, Mockhead have in the past shown us that they'll play a Black Mirror downstairs in the bathroom. And since you're bringing the pulse as well, it makes a lot of sense to, you know, combo it with rips here on the, the C4, just so you can have two C4s to play from below and Second, use them as plant denial. And also the extra intel, so you have an idea, when, because you're Five somewhat seconds. safe in the bathroom from a lot of different angles, mm -hmm. and you can get a lot of intel on the different hallways and different lanes of approach. So because of that, you can help uh, defend someone in the bathroom, as well as be ready to rotate into the kitchen as needed. How do you feel loose? I'm assuming an impact nade, uh, splash damage, would be my guess. Oh, Either that or a shotgun from KS, maybe? Hard to say, because we couldn't see it happen, but yeah, I took a little bit of damage early on, not great but uh, certainly not justifying a reset or anything like that. Yeah, Fabian not wasting any time here to go up uh, from the stairs. It seems like the split pushes to clear out any potential roamers. He chooses to check first before destroying the camera, just so he doesn't alert any opponents upstairs. And there is indeed one player upstairs. Finally, I'll take down the camera. And I believe that's the Jaeger crying on the top floor here, T3 in the window. There you go, very standard for the Jaeger to be doing this sort of thing. And what do you have to do as an attacker? You have to clear him out first, just so your back is completely clear. Kanta Rikari, though, will find KS on the oh, opposite end. Corey here that. trying to help his teammate just to have some sort of crossfire, but he'll have to worry about Kanta Rikari by, by the side. Losing the smoke early on is not great. Well, good job with the rotations Police here, but they have yet to catch anyone off guard. Yeah, and he heard the Mira window pop here. I believe that was the one on top. Uh, uh, what? what? Hello? Where are you? This What? The set is completely clear. G2 just come in, but they lose two players. Kanta Ricchetti will get one, though. Should be able to plant it. Where is everyone? This whole setup is relying on C4s and Pulse, and Pulse is just trying to walk up with no Nitro Cell. Mira had already used hers, and the site is compromised. The plant has already happened. They have line of sight on the white stairs. Kanta Ricchetti with a second one here. As he watches in the hallway, goes for the reload. Crying rips to try and retake, but Crying is already down and out. Rips will find one. The Vector doing his job, though. We saw a spot there on the Thermite. Rips will try to go for the fight. He hit fires, but no, not enough. Gogar will drop to the floor and find the kill. And what was that absolute massive mismanagement from Mocket as they put too much manpower to holding off tower? They're like, hey, which set are we playing again? Yeah, that was a big problem we saw as well in North America on uh, on two play days ago. Was just too many people off site, site being taken. I mean, that was by mint on the blitz a lot of the times. But it was just, I mean, earlier on in, in Oregon's history, there was a lot of good retake strategies. But I feel like with the current setup, the current operators, things like that, retakes are just not working very well on dorms. And it seems like you just need to have a much tighter hold on the top floor, and then whoever's playing off Rome just really needs to be able to play independent and rotate back up if needed. But you just depending on being able to rotate up, you're pretty much going to be forced up two different sets of stairs, and white stairs is usually a huge part of that, which is not the hardest thing to defend once you've got sight control. So Kanto doing what he does, though, in terms of kills, but Goga up there as well. Look, between him and Kanto, it is the majority of G2's kills coming out here. As of course, though, that, I mean, that's no surprise seeing Pengu pretty consistently playing the Monty, similar to what we were just talking about with Mint on the Blitz playing that every time as well. So it's just kind of funny, two different shield styles here yeah. on the same map on attack. Hmm, very interesting. So we'll go back to the same site and we'll see how things change for Market or don't. <laughs> well, it's certainly getting a bit farther behind now, now two points behind. Not the worst situation to be in, but it's slowly creeping up there. Ah, they lost one of the Twitch drones. So of course, this has been uh, you know a thing added around six months ago where uh, during the prep phase, if a drone gets destroyed, then the operator's uh, icon up. Uh, it's like kind of dimmed out. Yeah, it's dimmed out. It becomes a bit grayed out, which means that the drone is lost. So we know there's only one combatant left here for Twitch. So only one drone to use later. Kanto has to be a bit careful with that as his team is going to try to help him out to snipe any of those uh, mirror windows or the lesion humans. Yeah, definitely going to be useful. I imagine he's probably going to kind of reserve it a little bit, but if Vale can do some damage here, then he might have to bring up that drone, as he probably didn't drone in there just yet. Look, he looks like he's looking the other way in towards the dining room. If uh, Vale can stay hidden here, this could be really bad for Pengu. 
Oh, the timing oh. though. Unfortunate, it's gonna try to fight the other side, and there you go. Cantor Ricchetti will do the damage and uh, get the kill, and no damage done at all. This is, I don't know why Vale try to peek this, just because the the shotgun is just ready from KS, and they can use this very easily to bait their opponents in. You can also hear that uh, C4. And they can hit the wall now. They definitely did hear the smoke upstairs. And Yunus will get one Fabian with the second. And this is all falling apart way too quickly here for Mocket. It's just coordination very much lacking for the squad. Rips still set up as KS holding in with the shotgun. And just looking down those preset holes, and he's just unable to find anyone in below. I mean, it was a nice idea, but he just, he couldn't save his man in the kitchen, so it became completely worthless at the end. Oh, Jonas right behind, and everybody's boosted up now, so the Monty will ADS super fast, and Pengu will get the headshot. KS will go down yet again, mock it, losing to some very odd coordination, well, lack of coordination. I gotta imagine if you're mocking at this point, you're just excited for the side switch, just because the sheer amount of Finca Monty coming at them every time. I mean, Pengu is so good on Monty, he just seems to be a force to be reckoned with as he just slowly pushes through the map. And Kanto playing behind him as well, or Eunice, whoever he has behind him at the time, seems to be able to hit the shots without hitting him in the back. That does require a lot of coordination and practice to do, but it, it really works very effectively. You saw, especially when Vale, for example, tried to counter him in the hallway right by the dining room door, it just, it was pointless. I mean, he was going to try and kill whoever might be behind Monty, but in doing so, there was no one there at the moment, and then Kanto just peeks around at the right moment. He's dead instantly. He just can't do anything about it. And this is the thing as well. Having the Finca on the squad very much helps in all of this for G2, just so they can ADS super fast and yeah. make sure that everything just happens at a faster rate. You mentioned early on, they're getting much more efficient and faster at ex executions. Yeah. And that's exactly what's going on. And then you compound the fact that now you have just faster everything, except for your movement, obviously, with the Finca. Works out perfectly. And having the LMG means sustained fire. And it works out so well for G2. Interestingly enough, it's Cryant, the new member of the squad, who is topping the board for Mach. Yeah, five kills versus everyone else. I think having one or two each, so. Good to know that they brought on someone that can at least lay down the kills. Mm -hmm. Imagine, as usual, probably another ranked star kind of player coming in. He's, he's had experience in the past, actually, so uh, it, it definitely is not um, you know, pro league level. Uh, but you know, having at least CL level experience, which is what we had, what he had back in the day with Planky Dynamics, is definitely something that is there. You know? Yeah. Um, is it worth the change compared to Baka? That is only something that we'll figure out as this um, as this season really goes on. Remember, Buck O'Brien is not out of the team. He's still set as a substitute. No, he's on, a, I think, an anime therapy retreat. It's like rehab. Well, yeah, we need to have that for Suzaku as well. Oh, good luck. I think that might take a long time. Oh, yes. Some money sink. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Well, we'll see if the same strategy can work for the final attack round here for G2 this time. So they're bringing the same line again. The only change we've even seen so far was the one time Fabian brought uh, the Sophia instead. Yep. So did it looked like that was, uh, you know, hey, did it once. Might have been for that particular attack, but either way, it doesn't seem to be reverting back. Just sticking with the IQ now, so. Ooh, oh, Kanto. Wow. Just walks on in and he finds two. No! How does this even happen? Not even any damage on him. He's allowed to just walk in and get two kills? All right. This is... When it comes to Kanto, I wouldn't say allow. <laughs> it, he kind of just does it. No bueno at all. If on a scale of 1 to 10, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, if it's somewhere just below zero. Not great. Anyways, Pengu and Yonas, though, yet again, I've seen the dynamic, well, not so dynamic duo of the Monty and the Finca uh, up together. Pengu here will set up for smokes, at least get some information. He'll bait out one smoke canister. Of course, he still has a second smoke grenade in the back pocket. There's a ton of time here for G2 to play with. Of course, with two players being down, and one of the... Uh, whoa! Kanto Ricketti again! Hello. He gets zero! Oh my god! Four one K. more for the ace! Can he get it? Oh, no! Eunice. Eunice again will take it away! What? My goodness. How is he just allowed to drop everywhere? He is such a beast with that. Just 
I mean, he's the kind of player that would play very good Ash, but I feel like a lot of Ash players, including Canadian, have transitioned over to Twitch now. Oh, I wonder why. It's certainly it's, working. Do you think that it it has something to do with, with a word that starts with fa and ends with mas? Possibly. Possibly. There we go. That's why you're the analyst. Press F2 to agree. <laughs> Can we get some F2s in chat? Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, we will see a dorm start from G2. And also one other thing, interesting thing I wanted to note before I uh, forget is one thing uh, we saw from G2 was a consistent use of Thermite and never a Habana in terms Indeed. of their attacks. They never Indeed. really felt like they needed it to open the hatches. They're just like, we only really need to open two hatches anyways. Attack most, so Thermite will do just off. fine. And uh, Goga, very, very good Thermite. So may He's also okay. see the same thing here as KS is a pretty consistent Thermite as well. So he's going to go with the double breach, though, bringing Veil vale as backup. I mean, Goga is the reason why I'm wearing a Thermite pin today. It, you know, it's, it hits right here in the heart. Well, hopefully not with the pin part. <laughs> that would be... That'd, I mean, you say that, but then Lesion literally sticks a huge needle in your foot. It's not... That really has to hurt, though. I mean, honestly, as a diabetic, that's just... That's mild yeah, tickle at this point. <laughs> Yeah, you are kind of used to it. Well, there is the pain of life that's, as well. That's why I'm a Legion yeah. main. <laughs> I want to share the pain. <laughs> that was sting a lot. Yeah. All right. No, nothing too different in terms of uh, defenders here coming huh. up from... Uh, it, it is, though, odd that Pengu is reinforcing the wall here. Usually what we'll have is a soft crouch level mirror window, as, of course, it is time for me to go on and on and on about mirror windows. But it still does work out pretty well. And there you go. That is why. That is yeah. why. So Fabian can impact next to it, and you can still use it very efficiently. There no, it's go. definitely useful. If you don't need to vault over it, mm -hmm. then it's great. I mean, that was one of the reasons to use it before at the crouch level was to be able to vault over it as needed, as well as to be able to chuck anything over to stop anyone coming to, for the plant from the other side. But the hole that you just saw him open up with that impact actually is more of an angle that gets into the closet a little bit more through whatever hole they third might open. So it actually it's a, a slightly more advantageous angle. And Kanto, of course, leading the way against Vale. And there, that, well, there's some redundant hard breacher working out here. Yeah, and this is the, the odd thing. Um, Mach, there are running the double hard breacher. Now, usually what happens is that the Buck and the Habana play together. It's something that Team Secret do quite a bit, where the combo of the Buck and the Habana will come in together from Dining Hall and try to open up their way into the kitchen. But you see the smoke, or the mute in this case, upstairs has opened up an extra hole just to help out his teammate. So that is exactly what G2 are trying to do. They're trying to trap Mock it in their entry into that kitchen. So well, they half, they're still in dining. Be very careful about this here. And whoa, whoa. rips, rips the needle. Fabian will go down, losing the uh, goo mines of the Legion sort of midway through the round. It really does hurt. Now, do they have information on the player upstairs? Not really. Will Corey try to use that hole to his advantage? 100%. Well, they're going to buck as much as they can, at least. So even if he dies, someone else can use that hole to their advantage. But advantage in this case, going to Goga for the most part. Somehow, Corey even surviving through all of that. But uh, you see here, G2 have reset. And even the mirror window is going to get popped. So they it can be used now from both bomb. sides aggressively. And oddly enough, the, the bandit is actually playing in the main lobby. C4 is going to get thrown out, but mistimed here by Yunus. And Kanto Ricchetti is now in school, so he can rotate away and even use his C4 for later on in the round for potential denial. And this is something that we were talking about before. This is a specific way of uh, setting up a mirror window so you can deny any pushes through the main bedroom and into the generator room. And whoa, you see the drop here. It's crying on the floor. Corey has dropped as well, and Zofia obviously can help herself back up as, of course, that is a very well-known Polish superpower. Second player is down. The Rips will find one. Gogo will finish off Corey, but it's Rips and KS. Only two left alive. C4 is still available here for G2. I'm not sure if Pengu is actually bringing a spot himself. A bar. 12 seconds left on the clock. The attack has to come in. Mirror window has been popped, but he finds the kill. Is there enough time for the plant? No, Goga. He went down before, and Pengu is ready to save the day. Rips. Only the last one to fall here for Mock at Esports. And not a great spot if you're Mocket. This is a very huge reversal compared to what we saw on day 12 of EU in Season 8. 5-5 five, five back then. The only difference, difference that has happened is really Mute now having an SMG 11. 
And uh, otherwise, not really much. One other significant difference. Uh, Lion auto banned, meaning they don't have to spend a ban. I mean, it's not. A, it may or may not have made a big difference to the strategies they wanted to go with, but it means something else that G2 doesn't have to worry about. Indeed. Giving them even more point advantage. And of course, Six as we talked about, this, this matters a bit more than that match did for them. We will see the first Doka be brought out here, as well as Fabian actually on Doc. Now, Kanto had played a lot of really good Doc on certain maps because you put an ACOG on that guy and it's just, he is nuts with it. But we are seeing some interesting switch ups from some of their usual roles in the sense of like, uh, we, we saw a lot of Eunice playing Bandit, for example, normally, whereas last round Kanto was on the Bandit and doing very good on it, might I add, uh, really holding down that dining room uh, and kitchen area. And it was just their inability to really progress past that. I would say it was a big factor in them losing the round because they were just stuck in that area for so long trying to make their moves through it. The, and their inability to get any kills through the floor, in fact, the, the holes in the floor kind of working against them by the players upstairs in dorms definitely uh, was not something that worked as well for them. You see the holes being opened up in the wall there so they cannot thermite that. And they are not bringing a uh, Habana, so they are not going to be able to hit the... Uh, the hatch Attackers with the, uh, you know, any kind of ex or anything like that. But there's the mute that I would imagine will be jamming that hatch as well. No, you so can't set up a thermite that. charge in a certain position. Usually you put, you know, two mute jammers downstairs just so it can cover the hole. Yeah, no, it's, it's tricky because, I mean, the mute jammers are definitely more effective with the new hatch rules that were on the ex Kairos. But also, yeah, trying to be able to get that and getting two mute jammers down, good luck. Now, one thing to highlight is that when we had our North America play day, and to some extent even with Latin America last night, um, we saw quite a bit of Thatcher play in this matchup. No Thatcher whatsoever. Yeah, we, we, there was... NA seemed to be running a lot more consistent oh, yeah. Thatcher than we're seeing so far. Uh, this is the first match of the day, though, so we'll see from here, but definitely the case where you, you would think there would be a bit more Thatcher play, especially with even stuff like Goobine's effect, but okay. Kanto, that's uh, not a good start for you. Smoke is definitely vital to the laundry defense a lot of the time. Oh, Fabian just firing down. With the dock, he can boost himself back up to full health. Still fire in from Pengu as the duo here is trying to work it together. There's a mute jammer to try and help him out as well, but I'll just fall back and Rips will try to rip into the wall because he missed the shots there on his uh, opponent moving through the bottom of the tower. And he'll go all the way down to Laundry. Now, having lost the smoke is obviously a huge a loss. And the reason why you saw Fabian and Pengu spending so much extra time in the tower is to try at least burn some extra time off of Mocket. So at least somehow it is able to redeem the loss of the smoke. Definitely helps compensate for that, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, they obviously have a potential C4 as well from both uh, the Mira as well as, I would think, Pengu bringing one also. So it's a good thing he lived to manage to get away from that. What? Why did Zofia use the lifeline when the buck was right next to her? We see a lot of that, just especially when you start getting low on time. Dude, you, you don't have time. This to is talk like a minute it. ten. Yeah, I know. But, a lot of time. But they lost so much time just taking tower. I, they have a man advantage. I, I don't I, get it. It's it's just I would imagine lack of coordination and crying is new on the team. So. Oh, if only you had a lifeline for that. If only you had a buck. It's like yeah. It's like using X Kairos. Oh no, yeah, maybe. He gets KS and takes him out. That's a thermite removed, but not really the biggest of losses. As Fabian going down really does mean that that long-range potential with the ACOG is not going to be available. Peng Pengu somehow finds the kill. Yunus on the victory or the That's Mira will have to go for the reload, but Kryan is ready. Downstairs, Goga looking down. Remember, match point on here, and it's uh, Pengu with one health trying to save the day. As well as Goga, Pengu will find the first kill. As Goga rotates in, Rips is ready and wins out the duel. Try to take down the Spaniard on the squad. Fanger ready with a C4, and it will not connect. A lot of damage done here to the Capital, but can he win the fight out? Dokibi's on the floor, now cleared out. Time is in the hands of Pengu here, and he's gonna try to listen out for the Capital as Rips will nail the kill. And using the Beretta M9 there is gonna be more than enough to finish off Pengu, who's already at a sliver of health. And that was way too close for comfort. Yeah. I, there was definitely a, a bit of over-aggressive misplays coming out from G2. For example, when Fabian overly aggressed trying to push against Blue despite the hatch being open above him, kind of gave a free kill to Kryon, as well as there was a bit too much aggression against some of the other attackers coming down the stairs when they could have played time a lot better. Yeah, they didn't have the smoke to do so, but they had the goo mines, which you saw it caused some slowdown because, of course, you can't plant 
with one of those in your foot, plus the C4s they still had available, they definitely didn't need to be peeking as aggressively as they were. I mean, that is something that G2 can usually play in their favor a lot of the time just because that aggression usually works out for them. But it was just in the positions where they did not have the control of the parts of the map they needed, like that hatch I mentioned in uh, the meeting hall going down, for example. Had, uh, for example, Fabian played a bit back further back. into the B site, he definitely could have lived a lot longer, and I think that would absolutely Attack would have secured them the round the had he just been alive at that point, because he could have also healed up his teammates that were low on health, Indeed. stopping them from it being such a fight. But Kanto, 14 kills, definitely making sure he is doing what he just, was brought on this team to do. Just another day at the job, really. Another day at the office here for Kanto Ricchetti. Absolutely. I mean, this is uh, this is still going very well for G2. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah, they Only are one round away. Lost. Yeah, it's it's very likely to still be finished here. But they are going to bring out what is probably the first dining room defense we've seen in a long time. Yeah, actually, we haven't seen it so far, um, at least this week. No, yeah, we haven't seen it this season. So I just mean in a long time. It's, it's been a while. <laughs> we haven't seen it this season. Well, we haven't seen it since like we last haven't seen year, it 2019 man. yet. Okay. Yeah, we haven't seen it since last year, man. Yeah, it's been a year. So long. It is a very, very rare defense, though. We'll see if, if anyone can pull it off, though. I have faith G2 is very likely able to, but either way, they still have the extra buffer to be able to do so, you know, to, uh, I'm sorry, to continue on if it doesn't work out. And we are going to see Junus go back to Bomb the bandit that uh, I was talking about. He's so good at earlier. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is a stable operator for him. Uh, stable, that is. Kiss is going to sit up here and. I like how they had oh, the shots. They, they were pre-firing through the hatch trying to catch the area where the battery usually was, but then he placed the battery after the shots went down. Oh, no. Corey will find the kill as he went all the way down to fight Kanto Ricchetti. And now you lose out the Jaeger, and you lost one of their thermite charges. So this attack has to be executed in a much better way. Now Corey can go all the way up top and try to deal with his opponents, and you actually have to kill the Valkan. He's working on it. Just taking a few, few magazines. All right, Vel will at least destroy here the uh, window and can enter into the site. Now, Armory will be the position potentially for Corey. Because obviously, holding the top floor is very important for this sort of site, especially if you're looking to still enter from the meeting hall. What's surprising to see Vale running the AUG? Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, all three weapons that IQ has, the, the G8, the AUG, and, of course, the SU-553, the Commando, all three are pretty dark. Oh, this is how you do it. Jonas is going to get burned out of position and will get killed by Rips. Nicely done. This is how you deal with a bandit that just wants to stay here and trick. Oh, they Pegu! <laughs> wow. Crying. And that's how you deal with that capital. Cry me a river. He just. Oh, man. The Zofia just got shot down and shut down instantly by Pengu, but it's still advantage. One man extra for G2. Three versus four. Still no hold on the top floor. It's under a minute left, though. This is where things start getting dicey for the attackers as they have yet to do anything. Again, not bringing the cap out. Or, the, I mean, they had the Thatcher. The bandit battery is just still there. Yeah, it's that's such a problem for them. I mean, you have a man advantage. I mean, you. the big thing is losing the Zofia. Now you cannot impact that out. shield to destroy it. And Corey is right on the tail. Oh, they're literally, oh my god, no, how is this happening? Fabian right next to Corey should have been hearing him here and finally goes in for the kill in the back. Corey's been spotted. He can actually enter the site in the kitchen at least. He'll pre-fire into the dock, but Goga's ready. Pengu will go down as Goga will heal himself back up, but he's the last man alive. And the dock, pretty good operator to have in this situation. 12 seconds left on the clock as Mocket will have to go and plant ASAP, but there you go. Finally, Bulletproof Camera is going to get taken out. No information to get relayed. In for Goga as he finds kill number one. Sprays right next to the Capitao, who rips is still somehow alive in the fight, and somehow again he's down on the floor. Does he know it though? There you go, that's the finisher. Go here, clutches it on the dock, and that's all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. 7-2 for G2 Esports against Market Esports. <laughs> CCC, I defuse. There you yeah. go, that's all you needed, and that is game number one of the night Defenders done and dusted. Oregon, 7-2 for G2. I, I mean, they couldn't. Understand. They couldn't six two. So, <laughs> even the next best. I'm sure they. I'm sure they would have loved to. But either way, it was just. I feel like what we're seeing in a lot of these is a lack of some good communication coming out from Mocket. Just. I mean, it, some of it could be due to the fact that they have a new player versus G2, which is a very well-oiled machine by this point. And and this is kind of the debut match for Cryon. So I can only 
anticipate better play from Mocket from here. This is obviously not the team you want to start your first match against. Indeed. Trying to warm up, but baptism by fire, right, for Kryan. So hopefully he'll come off this even stronger to be able to come out swinging next match. And I do expect good things from them. Mocket are a very good, strong team to contend with.